Hello, gorgeous. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Give Them Lala podcast. Before we deep dive into it all, I need to remind you to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and make sure you comment on this video because I love to bump gums. Thank you. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Give Them Lala podcast. Um, it should be a very, so <laughs> very fun. <laughs> so, yep, mom's going to talk in this microphone and you're just going to chill. Is that cool? So I have Ocean with me because um, my mom was supposed to have her today. But her little Pomeranian Bella, who we have had for 15 and a half years, um, has had like the biggest decline in the past I want to say two weeks and she's not eating. She's skin and bone. So my mom called and was like, I need to rush her to um, emergency care. I don't know what the outcome will be to me. I know it sounds so morbid and abrupt, but to me, it seems like Bella's. It just seems like she's dying. That's the TV, that's the TV that we're going to watch ourselves on. Yeah, um, I mean, so she- that's why I have ocean today. Can you say hi to everybody? Hi. Say hi. Good job. Um, How is everybody? Jess? Easton? Great. Had a great morning. (laughs) It's been something. Yes, I feel like it's it's been a whole week in a day, which is good and good. Today's been very long. It's good and good. I like that even more. It's just busy, 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 which is amazing. It's been a really long month. Does anyone feel that way? Yes. Everyone's feeling that way, by the way. I, I haven't spent a weekend in town in two weeks, and it will be like four altogether because I won't be here this weekend. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a traveling month. What are we doing? Is she biting it? <laughs> I don't know what she's and doing. And you guys even were just gone again. Well, that's the thing is I feel like there were so many I'm things on, on my... You You're are. on the podcast. That's absolutely <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the podcast. You're a big, big star, baby. Look at you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then she ruins it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this might be my favorite podcast ever. It's gonna be. It takes a lot of pressure off us. Yeah. It's gonna be very. Okay, we're not gonna say stinky, but she's she's wiling out. She knows that she's. <laughs> <laughs> she's an entertainer. I like. I'll give her that. Um. Okay. Can we be really quiet while mom mom does the podcast with her friends? Um. Yes. I feel like we've been back to back on everything. Okay, Ocean, we can't. I'm begging you. Please, babe, be good kid. Be good baby. <laughs> this is going to be the longest day of my life. Shh, you have to stop. If you like using debit over credit, don't you think it's time to also get rewarded? Well, now you can with Discover Cashback Debit. It's a checking account that rewards everyone with cash back on everyday purchases. Plus, there are no fees, period. We're talking date nights, thrifting the latest trends, nights out with your friends, and it's now earning you cash back with Discover Cashback Debit. Check out eligibility and terms at discover.com slash cashbackdebit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. All right, we took a quick break because Ocean started losing her mind and wanted to see herself crying in the monitor, so (laughs) Easton will not be joining us for this episode um, because he's going to take care of Ocean. So, hello, Jessica. Hi. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What were we saying? We were just saying how it's the longest Monday of it's our lives. the longest lives. Monday. It's the longest year. It's the longest week, month, hour of my entire life. So, I went yeah. to Utah for the Humane Society of Utah Gala. The goal was to raise $300,000. They asked me a few months ago if I would host it. Um, and if I remember correctly, before they had put all of the silent auction items into the $300,000 goal, they had raised $260,000. What? For the Humane Society of Utah. That's incredible. Isn't that crazy? That is amazing. Congratulations. I know that's like near and dear for anyone who doesn't know to not only your heart, but your mom's heart because she worked for them and with them for years and still does. She still works for them. Amazing. Yeah. And my my dog Lily came from HSU and she's 12. 
Oh my God. I know. She's an old broad. She is, she's a um, golden vintage girl. <gasps> but <laughs> she's so vintage. <laughs> my question is I know you, you were going into it nervous. I How, was nervous. Because you, did you MC it? MC the, the gala? Yeah. What's the difference between like MCing and hosting something? I feel like it's pretty much interchangeable. I might be wrong, but I feel like MC is more of like you're on the mic. I was on the mic. Yeah. And I was very nervous. But you know what? I felt like we got a lot of laughs. I feel like it was a very well-rounded gala mm -hmm. where it was like heartfelt, but also funny. I could tell that I was getting a little too comfortable though. Why? With the, with the room. <laughs> okay. Because as we were wrapping up and saying like, thank you so much. The dance floor is now open. I was like, the dance floor is open. I'm ready to twerk it for a real one. So if you're single, like meet me on the dance floor. And I immediately was like, oh no, you got too la la. What are you doing? <laughs> so if you're single, I mean, were there any eligible bachelors there? Are you kidding me? We're in Salt Lake City, Utah. All those people are married, have been married for 500 years and seven kids deep. All right. So no. So no, I didn't, I didn't meet anybody. Um, but could I tell you, it was so crazy being back there because I have not been back there in years. And I love being from there. But it made me appreciate Los Angeles because for a while I've been like, get me out of LA. I just want normalcy. I'm feeling suffocated. And I went back to my roots. And I think it's because it's not that I don't like Utah. I always wanted to get out of Utah since I was a child, right? It just felt very small for me. It couldn't, it didn't offer me what I, I needed it to in terms of what I wanted to be when I grew up. Um, but it's also strange because you have to remember when I lived there, it was like another lifetime. I had my dad. I lived in my childhood home. I move and it's like my dad passes away, my mom sells my childhood home and moves into another house. So it just feels like everything that I remember about living there, it's just like no longer. Yeah. I go there and don't even feel like I'm from there. Really? No. Do you ever try and drive by your childhood home or is no, it I would too never. painful? I would never. Never. Why? It's too, um, takes me to a very dark place. I will say I was very triggered being there. You were? Mm-hmm. Okay. Why? Because of... Because it just feels like another lifetime where it's like I'm familiar with this place, but I'm... It's almost like a trauma response. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It does. And also your mom's here. Easton's here. So well, that's the other thing. It's yeah. like I don't... Now, even my roots have been uplifted and moved to L.A. So I go back there and I had a moment on the plane on the way home. And because I always say like a prayer before we take off. And I look over... And it's like I have Easton and my mom, and they're both snoozing before we even take off. <laughs> and I just had a moment of just, like, complete gratitude that I'm going home, and I have my family with me. Yeah. Like, it feels good. Because I haven't had that before where I'm going from, like, Utah to L.A. I'm usually leaving someone behind. Whether right. Whether it's my mom or my brother. So that part felt good. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Well, good. No, that's so nice. It's so nice you all three were there. I'm. That's very interesting. You, um, not a trauma response, but yeah, that's what you said. It was a bit triggering. That's very interesting mm -hmm. because last year, I remember we talked about, it was around this time because it was a holiday episode, and you talked about how, like, you see yourself in the future going, spending the holidays in Utah with the snow, and do you not feel that way anymore? I don't think I feel that way anymore. Really? Yeah, I think I like the thought of it. Okay. More yeah. so than actually doing it. Because mm. it just floods me with, like, all of the things that used to be. Yeah. Time. Time passes. Things change. Yep. We saw my niece, who I have not seen dance in person. I've only seen through videos. She is an absolute star. Yeah. And it makes me excited because she wants to be in entertainment. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I feel like... The next, so many people were, uh, didn't know that I have an older brother. Oh. An older brother, Brandon, from my dad's first marriage. My mom and my dad got together when my brother, my older brother was two. So, like, my older brother calls my mom, mom, you know? Yeah. Um, but I watched her dance and I was like, oh my gosh. And she wants to be in entertainment and she's extremely talented. Like, I could see the second wave of moving happening very soon. <gasps> to LA. I know. 
Her name's London, right? Her name's London. Oh, welcome, London. Welcome, London. It was just, it was, that part was like so much fun. So when I'm at this place where my niece is dancing, it's like a very, I don't know if other places do this. It's very Utah. I remember like you buy tickets and there's little booths that are selling like homemade chocolates or like handmade crafts. Like it's just very like Utah. That's cute. So I see this amazing Grinch and it's just an old school Grinch head, you guys. And it's <laughs> fabulous. Okay. Handmade. Are we talking Hand- wood? No, it's like metal. Oh, okay. it's metal. Okay. And I'm like, this will be so cute for Palm Springs. It's $45. I was like, great. Do you guys ship? They said, we don't. I'm sorry. I'm like, how much could it be? I purchase it. I go into UPS the next day. They're putting it in a box. The head doesn't come off. It's just one piece. Like it's a circle with a metal like bar and then the Grinch head. Cute. Okay. okay. And he's doing the Grinch. <laughs> I can get my eyebrows just as high as the Grinch. <laughs> it's terrifying. It's Yzma. <laughs> so they put it in the first box. Doesn't fit. They put it in a bigger one. And she comes back, types it in the into the computer and my total pops up where I insert my credit card. You want to know how much it was to ship that thing? How much? $385. Is that a joke? It's not a joke. I about died. I literally said to her, are you shitting me? And she just stared at me. I was like, I mean, are you joking me? Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. You, I would have said I'm doing something else with it. I would have What am I going to do with it? sold it. I don't know. What am I going to do with it? That is... What you spent four over four hundred on a Grinch head. I certainly did. <laughs> and my mom kept saying, But Ocean's gonna love it. Um. Imagine her smile. And I was like, Yeah, why don't we put it on your credit card? <laughs> no. I was like, Yeah, you're real quick to throw shit on my Amex, aren't you? <laughs> Shipping is wild. Shipping costs are wild. I about died. Don't even you know the USPS is the cheap the most inexpensive. UPS is the most inexpensive? No, no, UPS. So there's UPS, FedEx, and then there's USPS, which is United, United it's States it's Postal, Postal Service. Service. That's the, But it's still up there. Well, guess what? It's gone. <laughs> she been shipped. She'll be arriving on Friday. It'll so be cute. It will be. Um, so another ocean story. We're laying in bed. And because she sleeps with me. I've told you guys she sleeps with me now. And she says to me, did you see this? Oh, my hell. <laughs> and she's pointing at something on my phone. And I said, Ocean, I don't want you saying that. And my mother says to me, Lauren, the more you discipline her, and she says this in front of Ocean, the more you discipline her, the more she's going to want to say it. Just ignore it. Don't make it a big deal. So I was like, fine, say whatever you want. She goes, can I say fuck? <laughs> Can I say fuck? Screams it at the top of her lungs. I was like, how do I get this to end? You never say, oh my hell. I've never heard you say that. I Does never Gigi? say, I don't know who oh. says it. But then today she goes into the bathroom and she goes, smells like dog shit in here. <laughs> and I'm like, who says that? Who says that? I don't know. Maybe I do say it. Maybe I don't. But it's mortifying. Anyway. Then after she says if she can say the F word, my mom then lays down the law. She said, here's the deal, Ocean. If you say naughty words, if mom says naughty words, Easton, you're all getting your mouths washed out with soap. Okay? That's how it's done. I was like, great, excellent. We all know the drill now. And we're laying there, whatever. She kicks my mom in the stomach once, twice, three times. I tell her to knock it off each time. After the third time, I pause, desperate housewives. I say, Ocean Kent. You do it again, you're going in your own bed. Press play. I can see her side-eyeing me as she cocks her leg back. Boom! Kicks Jeej in the stomach again. I said, pause. That's it! You're going in your bed! I take her into her bed. She's crying for mom. It's all good. She's She's quiet for a little too long. My melatonin starts sinking in. I'm out, out like a light. And then I hear the door open slightly and slam close really quick. And I'm disoriented. (laughs) My mom goes out to look. 
Ocean has turned herself into an avatar. She has found the only electric blue eyeshadow that big, tiny. She must have dug to the very back, grabbed her beauty blender, and she has painted it all over her face. All over her face. She comes in. I was like, what have you been doing? She goes, I just opened a door. I go, well, clearly a while ago. And then she makes her way with the electric blue eyeshadow to my white frette sheets. No. Yes. I said, no, no. Slurring, by the way. <laughs> Easton goes, I filmed it. Easton goes, you post this video. Not one person is going to believe that you've been sober for five years. I was like, I was woken up from a stupor. To a child, I was like, mom, you got a deal. I can't even function right now. I can only function enough to film it really quickly <laughs> for podcast content and go straight back to bed. <gasps> it's been a lot, Jess. What time was this, number one? I need get paint a picture. What time? Was this like you fell asleep at like 8 p.m.? Or it was, was probably like- 11. Okay, so it's a little late. I'm little, dying to see this. This is the first time I'm hearing this at all, by the way. So this is the funniest thing ever to me. This has made my day. I'm going to show this you the video. Made my day. I recorded it. And I am slurring in the video. Ethan goes, you show this, no one's going to believe that you reached five years. I'm like, I took melatonin. Yeah. It, I was exhausted. Yeah. You were. I mean, you had been gone all weekend. You had just came back from BravoCon <laughs> days before <laughs> she... It was a lot. She is such a character. Give Them Lala is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you look forward to the holidays? Or like most people, do you struggle with staying upbeat around the holidays? It's more common than you may think to not be quite so cheerful and bright. This time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change, something to look forward to and make you feel grounded and to give you the tools to manage everything going on. It's super convenient with BetterHelp. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suitable to your schedule, even during the holidays. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash GTL today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash GTL. Looking for a new way to relax and unwind? Check out Audible. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. Audible offers an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mysteries and thrillers, motivation, wellness, business, and more. Audible is the home of storytelling, and here's why I love it. It's perfect when I'm driving back and forth from Palm Springs. I actually listen to my audiobook, Give Them Lala, on Audible. Very on brand, and I narrated it myself, which was so fun to do. I think I did a pretty good job, too. Here's me patting myself on the back yet again. I listened to Stassi's book, Next Level Basic, on Audible. She did a great job narrating her book. She is one of the funniest people that I have ever met. And as an Audible member, you can keep one title a month from the entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Members also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. New members can try Audible now free for 30 days. Just visit audible.com slash Lala or text Lala to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Lala or text Lala to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash Lala to get started. Want to know what I saw at the Utah airport? Yeah. A Team Sandoval trucker hat. What'd you do? Did you go up to it? Did you go up to it? Yeah. (laughs) It. (laughs) That. No, but I was like, get into my notes app. I've never seen that ever in my life. She would have had to have made it herself. Oh, uh, and yeah. you didn't say anything? That would have been iconic. Lala Ken goes up and says, hmm, nice hat. What do you think she would have done? I would have said, send that shit to Daryl. <laughs> we got a problem. 911. Who's making this merch? They've gone rogue. <laughs> They've all gone rogue. Do you know who's making that merch? Tom Sandoval. <laughs> Team Sandoval hat. I defend him one time. Suddenly <laughs> they're out in these streets thinking they can wear Team Sandoval hats. No, no, no. Oh. And yeah, so that happened too. I wrote it in my notes. Um, wow. I assume we've all seen the Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey video. How do you feel about that? Because I actually think it was super cute. I'm obsessed. So cute. 
I never wish that I have had a partner. Yeah. And then when I saw that, first of all, his reaction when she changed the lyrics. I know. It was adorable. I know. Her dad's uh, response to it, too, with his Was that her the, dad? I thought that was his dad. Her dad. Karma is the guy on the Chiefs. Coming straight home to me or something like yeah, that. Something like that. So cute. That was really cute. And then after she's like waving to the audience and then like runs and jumps on him awkwardly, but it's fine. <laughs> she's She looks like a baby deer a little. She's always been baby deerish. Yeah. But, but like that's makes her, her thing. She's so adorable. I she's can't. She's so adorable. You said something in the office that shocked me after we saw that clip. Can what you, did I say? Can you tell your friends about after you saw that, your mindset changed a little. I said, I want that. I want to feel that way about somebody, which is very strange to me. And I was thinking about it because I'm like, how does one go about finding someone? I see people on TV finding men, but like I'm in a different situation, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sober. So I was thinking, okay, if I, if I do a Bumble account, we all know my I have a, a bond with Bumble, not only because of what they stand for. I love that it's female-driven. I would feel safe on that app because they put that at the top of the list. But also, I grew up with Whitney Wolf, who started Bumble. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it, it resonates with me in many ways. But I was like, if I start a Bumble account, I then know that people who are signing up for that are wanting to date. I can also weed them out quickly by writing in my profile that I am sober, I am a mom, and put in the bio just exactly, you know, like, no bullshit. This is what I'm looking for. This is what my life entails. And whoever, you know, comes into my world, this is what to expect. I feel like that's the route I'm going to have to take. I think that's smart. I think how that's else, so smart. How, how else, else do you meet someone? I don't go out very often. I love going out to dinner with people who I'm like enjoying their time. But to go out to just hope I meet someone, it's like, no, we Bumble is makes the most sense for me to start dating. Right. Right. I totally agree. Let me ask you something about the dating because we've had this convo a couple times and I'm always interested by your response. Okay. So you say sometimes it's it's nerve wracking when it's like, let's go to dinner. Mm -hmm. What is your ideal? Let's say you find someone you're like, this person's really cool. I feel like I know you. You have to at least converse with them a little, whether or not it's over the app or in person, whatever. Converse with them a little at first. You're not just going to dinner with a stranger. You converse, you vibe, you go, okay, I'm down for a first date. What's your ideal first date? Because it doesn't sound like it's a dinner. It sounds like it's more like a chill, like not maybe a happy hour with friends, obviously sober happy hour with friends the first time. Or it's a coffee or a walk in the park or a lunch. Like what is your ideal first date? Do you even know yet? I'm kind of weird. I think my ideal first like meetup I the word date freaks me out mm. would be with other couples okay so a social it, yeah it takes the pressure off and right. like I feel like when you go into a group setting you know you can kind of see how they are with other people like let's not waste time if I'm going to be sitting here with you one-on-one -on -one giving you my time and then I plop you into a room with like my friends and you're awkward well then you just wasted my time and now I have to explain to you why we're not going to link up again. Right. It's easier to be like, hey, do you want to come? We're all going to dinner. It takes the pressure off. Like, you don't need to pay for me. I don't need to pay for you. It's just like, I don't like the normal dating. Oh, that's interesting that that's even a thought of yours at first. I always expect when I used to uh, first date is paid for. No, ma I mean, no questions asked. And I know that's traditional and people would like boo me for it. But I'm like, always oh, first date. Yeah, you better pull out your wallet. Well, I would like to think that they would pull out their wallet. But mm -hmm. at the same time, like I, I'm not bougie, mm -hmm. but I am a little bit. Mm -hmm. And like, I want to go somewhere yummy and it may cost a lot. And I may make a little bit more money than you. So I don't want you to feel pressure. So let's just go with a group of people. When you can't pay for my sparkling water, though, which has happened to me. You're a real scrub. Yes, and that's really sweet of you. What a sweet, like, look, I want to enjoy dinner, and if I have to pay, I don't want them to stress. That's really nice of you. 
Am I nice? That's re- that's very nice. That is so nice of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, no, not the sparkling water though. Take out your wallets for the damn sparkling water. Literally. Mad? Because I got it in a bottle rather than from the gun. Well, so there's a charge. And it was like, I wanna, you'll just cover this. I was like, you're joking. You're joking, right? Oh, no. And then you expect me to kiss you at the end? <laughs> Have you lost your damn mind? What in the world? Right? <laughs> you quack. The streets are filled with quacks. They I be- think you're looking at the wrong places. I well, that's you're... why I've come to the realization that yes. we're doing Bumble. I and hear you. then I can just lay it out there. Mm-hmm. Let's just cut to the chase, baby. This is what Lala is looking for. Done. There we go. Did you watch BH? <laughs> Did I watch BH? Can I tell yeah. you my thoughts about Kyle? Yes. And I, I'm so excited for your thoughts because I looked at your notes and I don't agree with some of them, so I can't wait. All right. Let's 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 get into it then. <laughs> okay. Let's hear about Kyle. This is what I think. I've had conversations with people about... Kyle I know her not well I'll see her like for example if Teddy Mellencamp has a birthday for her daughter Dove Kyle will pop in it's like hey how are you great to see you but like we don't know each other like that um my thought is she has never been sexier everything about her whether it's the confidence the like everything even her style there's just something for me that I'm seeing that feels very empowered. There are some women older than me who are worried. And that's strange for me, especially because I'm coming from a very different place than they are. They are concerned that she's blowing her life up. Mm. These are my thoughts. Mauricio has been dirty for many years from what we've heard. To me, it seems like she's fed up, but she's not saying what happened Because she wants to maintain, like, keeping everything very chill from the outside. I'm not going to blow up his world or make me seem like the victim. There are children involved, my kids who are grown, who I don't want them to be dealing with this. And I am a little bit annoyed because I'm sitting here saying to myself, blow him up. Mm. Blow up his spot. Don't you take the fall for, for his bad behavior, which happens a lot. It happens a lot. The second a dude does something dirty and and the woman speaks out on it, everyone looks at her. You have children. Rise above. Hell no! (laughs) When you do something and then there are repercussions, that's just how it goes. Don't be a lying, cheating snake. You dirty dick. (laughs) You dirty dick. I won't have a spot to blow up if you act right. Right. I do wonder, though. I do. I do. My my only differing opinion here is that they did have so many, as we've heard from her, beautiful years together before. Who knows what happened? But she has said before she's had, had a beautiful marriage, beautiful family, lots of good memories. I do see her maybe looking at the kids and being like, I don't want to tarnish those. I don't want to We come did out. have beautiful memories and we could have yeah. continued to have those beautiful memories and you shit all over them. So now I'm going to shit all over you. All right. I hear I'm you. supposed to rise you. above and remember the beautiful memories and our yeah. beautiful children when you shit all over that. Right. No, you ruined this. Do you think it could be more powerful that she says that to him, though, and doesn't come out in public? And she says exactly what you just said, but to him. And she goes, I know this and whatever. If they have a higher power, I know this and God knows this. And it will be revealed. Yeah. She very well. She's strong in her Mm -hmm. faith. I do know that. And I'm sure, you know, and she has much more life experience than I have. I can't even imagine being in a relationship for 20 plus years, four kids involved, bringing a child from a different relationship into it and having a man step up in that regard as well. I don't know. I'm coming from my own Mm -hmm. road and journey where I'm like, you are taking the brunt of his actions and I don't like it. It's time for the man to be looked at. Like if they're was nothing for me to blow up, we wouldn't have this problem. You didn't act right behind the scenes. And now I have to, like, keep a brave face. Mm -hmm. No. 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 
No. Blood. <laughs> I, do, <laughs> I do agree. She has never been hotter. I mean, she is stunning. When I was watching last night, just even her sitting in that workout, she had just gone to the gym, like nothing. She was sitting in the workout clothes. And, and I think Kyle was like, oh, she must be like, I don't know. I think he said like, she must be the youngest, huh? And I was like, no, she's. I, You're Kyle. Yes. Yeah, sorry. My Kyle. Not yeah. my Kyle. Um, he, talking about Kyle Richards and said she must be the youngest, right? And I told him her age and he's like, I've honestly never seen a better look. Like she's stunning. And he's like stunning her energy, her glow. And we were talking about her inner workout clothes. She'd just gone to the gym. I was like, there's something about her. She looks really freaking good. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I. How did you feel about, do you think Sutton was upset that she wore pants? That's what I disagreed with you on. You think she was upset that they were spreading their legs? I think that she was, I think it was a, um, um, a snowball effect. I think at first she was annoyed because she was like, I wore pants and then I wasn't chosen. And then I almost think her like bouginess or uppityness, no disrespect, was turned on by that. And then she was like, oh, no, no, no. I don't need to be here. I, that being said, I saw, well, I want you to say your notes, but as of last night, I saw what you put, how you felt about her, about wanting to give her a hug. And I completely disagreed. I wanted to look at her and be like, grow up. Gr- I, and I, again, I, I, I don't know Sutton, but she seems, you know, fun and she's a personality and she's Southern and cute. But I was like, you could have Googled the show. You were disrespecting Eric. You know Magic Mike, though. You asked if Channing Tatum would be there. It, you know damn well what the show entails. Exactly. And also my big trigger is you have a friend who went out of her way, Erica Jane, to to have her friend set up this beautiful night for you, VIP. You get, you know, you don't get pulled on stage, big deal. But like a couple of your friends do. It was Crystal's birthday. She should have been on stage. And 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 then you, and let's be honest, I can speak from this viewpoint. Um, just, I mean, you can too, but there are cameras there. They're filming the show. And then you're going to stand up and stomp out and make a scene I, if I were Erica, Erica handled it so she's so classy. She class gave act. arguing up for Lent. I, I know I saw that three days, I, no arguing. She killed it, but I would have been furious. I'd have been like so disrespectful and rude. Don't do that to my friends. This is why I wanted to hug her. Yes, tell us. Okay, she's the girl who wears a kitten sweater on a date. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure it's a million dollars. She's with these women who are tits up, ass out, stilettos to the sky. <laughs> Everyone wants to fuck them. Yeah. She can't even get a second date with a dude. And then the one time where it's like, we're on camera and they'll probably call me up and I wore pants and I can't even get them to do that. Yeah. Where it's like, I wanted to like give her a little boost of confidence. Like I felt sad for her. Like you need someone to be like, you're enough. That's really, (laughs) why are you so, so sweet today? You're sweet every day, but that's really nice. Great, great viewpoint because I guess you're right. Do you think... Do you think that she, it was the pants the yes. entire time? She talked about it. She's like, I never wear pants and I brought pants. And then remember, on the everyone else got picked picked out of the crowd or whatever. Yeah. Not everybody, but most of them besides Sutton. And she goes, I wore fucking pants for this. She said, I wore fucking pants for nothing. I wore fucking pants for nothing. And it was like heartbreaking to me. I was like, she's feeling left out. Mm, like, sad. she wanted someone to, like, give her a lap dance and spread her legs. And you know how much our hearts would have been with her if she, if that's what happened and she I didn't know. do what she did. Like, <laughs> I know. It's <laughs> really sad. I wanted to hug her. I think all of us parents have the same issue with our young kids. They grow up so fast. Ocean grows out of everything before she even has a chance to wear it. So that's why I downloaded the Rakuten app. Now I get cash back on everything I buy for Ocean and Lily and my mom and Easton. Okay, myself too. Rakuten is the smartest way to save money when you shop. You can get cash back at over 3,700 stores like Nike, Bloomingdale's, Petco, Ulta, and Adidas. Rakuten makes shopping for anything and everything fun and easy. You can also save money on electronics and home essentials and travel and dining and so much more. Membership is free, and we all know how much I love free. It's also very easy to sign up. 
If I can do it myself, you definitely can too. So get in on cash back action and join the 17 million Rakuten members who have already earned over $4.6 billion in cash back. Start shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app to start saving today. Your cash back really adds up. When have you ever heard someone complain about receiving jewelry as a present? I know my mom never does. And when you're investing in a really nice piece for yourself or someone else, you want to make sure everything about it is perfect. And I'll tell you what makes me feel best about buying jewelry, sourcing it from BlueNile.com. Blue Nile offers thousands of independently graded diamonds and fine jewelry at prices significantly below traditional retail. I am obsessed with every single piece of jewelry that I just received from Blue Nile. I made a haul from necklaces to bracelets, and I fell in love. And if you have questions, Blue Nile's jewelry experts are on hand 24-7 via phone or chat. From technical questions to budget suggestions, they're here to help you find a gift you can feel great about. Blue Nile also offers 30-day returns and a diamond price match guarantee, so you can always rest easy knowing you've made the right choice. Experience the ease and convenience of shopping Blue Nile today at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. What, how did you feel about the conversation between Garcelle and the rest of the group when she said she doesn't feel like she's in a safe space to discuss her children? As I can't speak as a mother, but as soon as moms say that, as soon as they go, as soon as the kids come into it, safe space, I go, okay, I hear you. Like I had no um, opinions that were differing. She didn't feel that was a safe group to talk about her kids. And I heard her and I'm like, great. That's how you feel as a mom. Good for you. Good for you for saying it. How did you feel? Because you're a mom. I'm not. I could completely understand where she was coming from. And she's a mama bear. I mean, Mm -hmm. even with what I said, she completely iced me out. And I probably would have done the same thing to her if she would have said whatever I said about Ocean. And with everything that she went through last year and the bots that were coming for her son. And then Erica drunkenly telling her son to go the fuck away. I don't know if that's exactly what she said, but she used the F word. Although they would all deeply regret laughing about that. It's still something where it's like, this is the one thing that like I can't bounce back from mm-hmm. when you come for my kid. I also understood where Dorit was coming from because as a mom, if I had someone say to me what you did hurt me when you laughed about what happened to my child, I would be offended because it's like, but I'm a mom and I may have messed up, but I understand where you're coming from and I want you to know that this is a safe space. But like Garcelle said, she was making it about her Her. again, but I could understand. I could understand where both of them were coming from as, as moms. Garcelle's offended that you came for her child or laughed about something not freaking cool and I get it. But also as a mom, if someone said, I don't trust talking about my kid to you, I'd be like, I'm so hurt by that. It's very hurtful. It's very hurtful. I hear uh, in that sense, though, I saw, I did think, you know, Dorit, it isn't about you right now. And I understand you're hurt. But to me, the tone was more, she started coming at Garcelle versus, hey, I want to let you know, I hear what you're saying. And I'm very hurt by that. And I have to process this in my own way. But then again, it's like, that's also boring TV. (laughs) No, I know. So it's like, you know, if she goes, I have to process this. And then it's like. (laughs) All right. Lame scene. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Did did you watch Miami? Yes. I die that Todd, Alexia's husband, did a nine-minute apology to Anthony (laughs) via social media. (laughs) How do you feel about Todd? I like Todd. I think he's sweet. I think he's so sweet. Yeah. And he's, like, cute with, with her kids, and I loved that moment last year, even though it got heavy. Between Alexia, her two children talking about Frankie and Todd saying, you don't help him. You, you guys, you know, treat him the way you would treat other people and we need to baby him. Mm -hmm. I like him. Mm -hmm. I think he just has a sweet soul. I don't know. It's like a gentle soul or something. Yeah. And he didn't show up for the Kumbaya dinner. Well, he was downstairs, right? He was. Yeah. But he didn't like come up to mingle with the group because he didn't want to talk about the nine minute apology that he did via social media to Anthony. (laughs) I mean, to me, I go, 
respect. He said, I felt like I was, it, there are people there that I, wh- however he phrased it, I shouldn't have been up there, so I didn't come up there. Did you think it was disrespectful that he should have just swallowed whatever and, like, gone up there? For his wife, yeah. Yeah, you do. Okay. Well, she was devastated. I Alexia know. was, like, sobbing on the phone to Marisol that he wasn't going to come. I know. I know. I know. It's hard, though, because you, on one hand, you have to know yourself. What is worse, him not showing, and maybe it's him not showing, or him going up and saying something or doing something or having this awkward tension that— That Alexia has to explain later? hmm See, I, it's, I don't know what it's like to really have a partner come with me everywhere and then not show up to something that's important to me because, for the most part, I have always gone places on my own. Right. You know? Yeah. So I just— I can only sit here and say, what would I want in that moment? I would want you to sack up for five minutes because in a way I would rather explain to people why you said certain things at the dinner than explain to people why you didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I think it's deeper than that, which Adriana pointed out in the last episode that Todd said you nailed it. About the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Which is also like, I love Todd, but don't say that. It's if someone comes up to you and it's like, what did she say? Trouble in paradise? And Mm -hmm. he was like, or something. And he was like, you nailed it. It's like, don't say that. Don't say that to another one of the women. Especially not, especially not Adriana, who Alexia has been beefing with for the longest. Remember last season, Alexia, something happened to Adriana's foot and everyone was telling her to get over it. Yes. And she says to Alexia, but accents have consequences. Look at Frankie. No. Todd, out of all the people to say it to? Her? I know. I know. That's the one. Yeah. Didn't like that. How crazy that next week's episode, Larsa's having a homecoming party for Marcus, who's been (laughs) gone for three days. I I want your take on Larsa and Marcus's relationship. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it. I want it all. I want to be... Travis and Taylor, yeah. and I want to be Larsa and Marcus. That's what I want. Marcus is very good looking. He's very hot. And they're very sweet together, they're, I think. They look like they have fun. They look like they have so much fun. They look like they have great sex. The best. Done. And she's busting it wide open like four <laughs> times a night, she said. Wait, <laughs> when she was talking about her previous relationship, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I Do think you- it was Cardi B or someone. Or maybe Nicki Minaj that was like, sew your vagina up or something. (laughs) Like, no, you're not. I could see her doing that, though. I could see her, too. And guess what? That was, whatever, years ago with her previous relationship. I could see her doing it. Look at her in the gym with those squats. She was killing it with all that weight. I'm like, damn, she's killing it in the bedroom. And it's not like she said she was doing reverse cowgirl (laughs) four times a night. She could have been fully dead fish, starfish for three of those. True. You know? True. All she said was she was having sex. And that does not mean that you're getting buck wild. You could literally just lay there. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Um, You sure can. It's also crazy to me how quickly people move on to other relationships. What In what sense? Like Lisa. Mm. Lisa Hochstein. Where she's... And this is a common thing where she's not even divorced yet. And this could take a while. Right? I think she... She did have a small win um, in this last episode. But how you can find someone and, like, not be scarred from it. I hear you. I think that some people, and I'm not saying this in Lisa's case, but just even in my friend's case, it's like they just got out of a four-year relationship and a month later you're, you're in a new relationship and you're some people, and this was me, and I don't know if it's a codependent thing, to truly get over the last relationship. And it sounds bad saying because it's kind of easy, but in the moment I didn't think I was doing that. And I ended up having long relationships with these people. I had to date someone else. I remember I I got out of a two-year relationship I was heartbroken over. Heartbroken. I mean, every night crying. A month later, I was crying every night for a month. I meet a guy. I'm interested in him. And then I was over it. And I was like, oh, this feels good. By the way, I was with that guy for a year. Wow. So I don't know if it was a codependency thing, but I hear what you're saying. Some people need the time and space, and I think others kind of need someone else. Can I tell you what I think? Yes. I agree with you, but I think if I were still drinking, Mm -hmm. I would 100% be in another relationship already. Okay. 
Okay. Why do you think that? It loosens you up. Let's the walls down. You put your walls down. You just are a little less in your head. It's a social thing. Mm -hmm. So like you go out and you go to happy hour and have some drinks and you're kind of on the same playing field as everyone else where like I just think have had I not if I got out of my relationship and then was able to drink like a normal person Mm -hmm. I would have found somebody I it may have been a toxic somebody it could have been a great somebody but I I think I would be in a relationship because it opens you up more and it's very social. It's mm-hmm. a very social thing. Look at our world today. It's like, let's go grab a drink. Right. It's rare someone says, let's go out in the evening and there isn't alcohol involved. Unless right. you're sober. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's. And I also, like for me, I don't. Please don't come for me, you guys. My heart can't handle it. <laughs> but I don't think that I could be with someone who also struggles with addiction. Because I feel very strong in my sobriety and I know that when I'm having weak moments, I know what to do. And I'm not saying that there won't be a day where I'm like, this is really freaking hard. But I believe that I have the tools and I don't want to worry about someone else and their sobriety. I That may sound selfish, but I just, me having a child, like I can only worry about me and I need to know that you're a normie. That is, that's... um rightfully so. I mean, that's a that's a lot to take on and I'm sure people in those relationships good for you that can do it, but it's so great to know yourself like that, you know? Yeah. You know yourself and you know what you can and can't have. That is like I always tell people that's why it's like, "Oh, you can't be happy in a relationship until you're happy with yourself." I feel like a big as cliché as that is, a big part of that is knowing yourself, and what makes you happy, what you'll stand for, what you won't, and then you can Get in a healthy relationship. So right. you know that, which is great. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. It's weird, the funk that I'm in today. Are you in a funk? A little bit. Yeah. Just kind of like, eh. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. I don't know what it is. I bet you're exhausted. Do you, you think that's what it might be? La, you've been going, going, going. Like, literally going, and we, our first break will be Hawaii. Yeah, that'll be really nice. Yeah. It'll be nice to be with my baby for a long extended period of time um did you watch southern charm i did it's the best show on tv right now i have to say last night was the first time i've ever watched southern charm and i oh i i almost feel nervous saying this to your friends here but say it to my friends we are a very open minded group of people it's it a was, judgment free zone is it <laughs> Didn't seem that way no, there on was, that last video. You know what, though? Can I tell you? There was this girl. She always slides into the... And the reason I know about her is because Easton showed me something mean that she said about him. And she sent... She wrote a comment in the Sandoval video and said, unfollow. I'm glad I can finally be done listening to this podcast. And I was like, I've been wanting you gone for a minute. Like, People like you, I don't want listening. Like, you ain't in alignment with me. The real ones, the 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 ones who listen and, like, love it and vibe with us, those are the real ones. Thank you, real ones. And we met a lot of those at BravoCon. Well, it's like, real I feel ones. bad for you. You're constantly yeah. commenting mean things, and you still tortured yourself with listening? Yeah. And I had to give you a reason to stop? Like, you couldn't even come up with that on your own, being like, I just don't enjoy this. I think I'm going to listen to something else. Yeah. You continued to torture yourself. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but Southern Charm was triggering for me. Okay, tell me everything. I do not know these these characters. I do not know these people. I'm sure they're great. I was around a couple of them at BravoCon, not, didn't talk to them. They seemed great. I think it was like Craig. And is it Craig that's engaged to Paige? Are they engaged? Oh, I'm. You guys. They're together. They're. They've been okay. in a long term relationship. Paige for a while. is the one with the short brown hair. Yeah, she's hilarious. By the way, love her. Great they, style. Great. Oh, great style. I gave her a follow, and I was like, ju- I mean, she's funny in style. But I lived in Nashville for ten years. I'll make this quick. Lived in Nashville for ten years. I went to Belmont University. When I was in college, we went to a lot of Vanderbilt University parties. There's something about the um, frat guys. Southern with that that are always in the jackets, the button ups, the Sperry's, the bonobos. Like it's 
they were never very nice to me. We never vibed. And they, in like any time the girls and I would go to frat parties, they were always douchey to me. And I'm, I'm generalizing like crazy. I'm sure there were amazing. There's amazing frat guys. I nannied for a for a couple who whose guy was in a frat and he went to a nice school and they were amazing. But in general, a lot of the southern frat guys and I clashed all the time. I thought they were douchey. They thought I was like kind of masculine and like I would make jokes and be sarcastic and they wouldn't get it. And then. They were like, your friends a bit. Like, it was always like that. Yeah. And my girlfriends, like, more sorority girls, always loved them. And I just clashed. So that when I watched this, I was like, oh, those are the same guys. And it was a little triggering for me. Even though they're probably not. Shep gave me a little of that vibe. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. Craig didn't. But it was, like, the fly fishing, the even the outfits. This is so vain and, like, surface level of me. But I was just, like, sitting there watching. And it just took me back to those days. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep watching it because I I think the girls are sweet and but it was tough. Wow, I love a parallel that you can draw yeah. to yeah. why you were triggered. But you love it. Those I'm like, obsessed. I love. Okay, amazing. And I think the boys are hysterical. Yeah. And I just I love Craig. Mm-hmm. But um, it was so funny because at BravoCon I talked about this today on Amazon Live. But it was my row and then Taylor Armstrong okay. from OC. And then, like, Craig and Shep. Mm -hmm. And Taylor was disciplining them, the (laughs) entire Bravos. Like, turning around? Turning around, and she was giving um, TMZ outside of Craig's energy. (laughs) It was iconic. I was like, Tay, you good? And she was like, I will tell you what. (laughs) I'm about to pull some Oklahoma on their ass. I could be their mother. (laughs) It is annoying. It was amazing. Good for her. I loved it. So then we're walking out, and yeah. and Shep seems a little down. And I was like, what's going on, dude? And he goes, um, Craig blamed it on me that I'm the reason why they stopped serving drinks in the show. Like, they cut us off. <laughs> were they? Was he? I was like, no. Oh. They told us they were only going to serve drinks every other break because he told me that he was only served, I think, two or three drinks. And it was every other break. (laughs) I was like, no, they were just done serving drinks. It was the last break, no drink. Yeah. And now the show's over. Yeah. That's why. (laughs) (laughs) He was very defeated by that comment. Is he so tall? I wasn't. The Southern Charm Boys are massive. Really? Huge. And I've been around them before. And I'm like, did y'all? get those shots where you grow like a foot or two more because you're ginormous. Shep looks very tall. I'm talking like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Wow. They're huge. Wow. It's very hot. I'm sure, I was going to say, I'm sure they're very nice. I'm sure they're very nice. I just have, and it's probably something I have to work on. I just have a thing for those fratty guys that, a bad thing. Well, we'll just both talk about it in therapy. <laughs> We've all got our triggers. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Um, what about Olivia and Taylor talking? Olivia and Taylor talking when, okay, so. It Outside was, of the, she, Olivia comes up to Taylor's cabin or whatever, her parents' house. Yes. The, and the mom comes out. Again. Triggers. Triggers. Not me, you. Me. Olivia showing up. You guys, the sweetest thing. Olivia, um, friends with uh, the parents. Mm-hmm. So sweet. But I had an, you know, experience in the South where um, uh, God loving and Christianity, Christianity was very showy. So it was always like, oh, you know, bless your heart. And like um, God is with you. She needs Jesus. And then they'd be talking shit. They'd be like this, you know, this little and say the most horrific things and then be like, she just needs Jesus. And it's like, honey, you need Jesus. You need to go to confession, my friend, because you're being mean. But it was like, so then when there's like, even just the mom being like, I mean, God is good. Look at this beautiful land and this beautiful house. And it's like, right. But also like your jobs are good too, to get that. God is good. (laughs) (laughs) Also like my brother just died. Like, it's really yes. hard for me to look at the scenery right now exactly. and be like, God is good. God is good. It's like, yeah, yes, God is good. But it's also like, I don't know. There's just little things in the prayer outside. Please be just like, and it's like, I don't know. It's, it's it turned you off. It's off-putting to me. I 
I need to appreciate it more. I'm just, that's a trauma. I'm not trauma, but I'm just a bit triggered because of my experience. How did you feel? Because that's what I want to know about their conversation. I loved the prayer. Okay, sweet. I'm big on prayer. <laughs> and I just feel like Taylor's family, I feel like they're God-fearing people. I don't see them talking shit about people. I think that they are, that their faith is everything. Okay. Um, Taylor, I think, is a little lost. She's a lost little soul sending nudies mm-hmm. to people mm-hmm. and making out with her friend, her best friend's ex-man. I understand why Olivia's like, you know what? I just don't trust you. And I love that she was upfront and honest about it. I'm not going to play pretend. I don't even feel comfortable enough staying here. I'm going to go to Shep's. Taylor shows up. She's yeah. like, so I left your house to just <laughs> be with you at another house. What the hell? <laughs> Felt so horrible for Olivia. Then Rod, who snores mm-hmm. heavily, sits her down and says, I want to be exclusive. I Maybe he's awkward on camera. I don't know. There is zero chemistry there nope and if you close your eyes he sounds just like austin kroll (laughs) (laughs) i'm like you guys sound like the exact same person don't they wait austin kroll her ex-boyfriend oh the blonde the blonde who made out with taylor okay he um it was the car and look i get it it's like it they're feeding into the us as the audience but the car ride where it was just like silent it was so awkward and i was like oh tensing up ah they, um, I'm glad she said, well, that's not what I'm looking for right now. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think Taylor is a little lost, but I also think, I mean, I've been there. It's like, I also think she's just like trying to, it's so, I haven't been there. I've never, never made out with a friend's man. I've had that happen to me, which is why I've never done it. But, um, she was so fed up at the end of the night that my heart started to break a little when she did the wine thing. I'm sorry, but that was was so freaking funny. Oh, (laughs) what? Shep losing his mind over the ping pong game. (laughs) That, And then being like, do you enjoy making fun of me? And her being like, do you enjoy cheating on me? He goes, sometimes it was fun. (laughs) (laughs) No, you ass. Wrong thing to say. Literally triggered because he I used to fucking see that all the time your fucking football team lost and now you're being a little bitch to me at your frat party because your football team lost oh oh and like Helen oh, knows the owner Helen knows it. <laughs> literally he had a what, ping pong he lost a ping pong and then he's gonna bitch around and cry and be like you're making fun of me it's like if I were her I would have laughed in his face and been like you're a weirdo. You're a baby. I'm Same. out. Same. I wouldn't have said, like, do you enjoy cheating on me? It's I know. like, what does that have to do with the ping pong game? And then his his reaction to that was like, Sometimes. I think the winner here is Shep. <laughs> Shep won the game. And then she crawls in bed with him that night. Another, another, another fucking trigger is these, a lot of Southern women friends of mine, it was like, and this, I love Southern women, but it was like, the man can be so rude and mean to you and call you names and then you're like you make this big scene and then an hour later you're like sweetie move over i'm getting in bed with you it's like what are you doing what are you doing call someone call her mama she needs some prayer needs well yeah and tell her to add me to the (laughs) prayer list because i'm in need of some too i do like overall i love her parents though so sweet her parents are darling and what i said earlier does not reflect who I am as a human. <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, it's my favorite time of the pod. Ugh. I missed East in this episode. I'm actually very sad that he is not in here. So can I tell you what I think is also tripping me out that I think is going to be my ache of the week? Yes. The holidays are coming up. At first, it was like, you just buy for the friends, right? And then you get older, and you're like, we don't need to buy anymore. Let's just do a dinner. But now we all have kids, right? So I have a laundry list of children. I have Summer. I've got Cruz. I've got my own baby. I've got Hartford and Messer to buy for. And I'm like, this is also stressing me out. So naturally, because I also want to save money. Yeah. Have you dealt with Rakuten, the app? No, I'm... I literally just opened it because I'm obsessed. Okay. So I told Jessica to download this app. Yeah. I've talked to you guys about it before. It comes in handy 
in moments like this because my ache is, oh my hell, I'm so stressed about buying gifts. Get into your app right now. This is my relief, right? Yes. So not only can I shop for all these many children, I am also going to get cash back on all my stuff, all right? Mm -hmm. I can shop Disney, Bloomingdale's for my friends, right? Look at these Nikes. No, I see. Do you see the Nikes? Nikes, the, Air Jordans, the, and I'm also, by the way, because you know me, I'm so difficult with um, gifts. Yeah. I'm just scrolling through the freaking Disney Monsters Inc. stuff for Ocean, which is like No, I know. So I'm getting cute. it. And then I think like these really cute, because I want Summer and Ocean to have matching shoes. Uh-huh. So these cute little pink Air Force Ones. Oh, my God. For Summer and Hartford and Ocean. Don't you think they'd be so cute? No, these are adorable. I these know. so cute. And then don't even get me started because I think I'm going to go like ham on myself at Bloomingdale's. <gasps> oh my right? God, wait. I just found PetSmart on Rakuten, which means I'm getting Lily. Lily's going to need a lot of gifts. Oh. Ocean. Or Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Lily's going to need a lot of gifts because she just lost her best friend. Yeah. I'm going to get her. I'm going to get her some things. Some special things. Oh, I see some stuff for you. Stop. Oh my God. All right. I'm feeling... Much better about this. <laughs> I was starting to freak out. Yeah. You guys, I know that the holidays are coming up. If you're tweaking out like I am, feeling like you need to get all of these gifts and it gets so expensive, if you download the Rakuten app, I promise there are so many stores to shop from on there and you also get cash back. That's the way I'm going to be shopping because it just feels like it makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. I've got too many people to buy for. I feel like I want to ball on a budget. That's what I'm doing. So that's my ache and relief. Okay. Because yeah. that's pushing me over the edge. <laughs> I hear you. You know? I hear you, yeah. What's your ache and relief? So my ache this week is, I feel like it's kind of a relief, but I'm going to say it as an ache anyway. We have such a busy week. Yes. I'm going to say my ache and relief is one. We have such a busy week ahead, which I'm so excited about, and I feel like people will learn about it down the road. Um, my ache... I guess it's not really an ache because it's just busy, which I love, and we've got— Like your ache is that we're not going to be able to breathe this week. Yes. Yeah, we've got a huge week. We've got a big week. It's intense. But my relief can be that we have Hawaii coming up. I love it. Yes. That is epic. Yeah. I'm going to add that my ache is that Easton did not get to join us, but yes. I'm so thrilled that he took over taking care of Ocean. You guys, I love you so much. I hope that this podcast was not too intense at the very beginning. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of the Give Them Lala podcast. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and I will catch you next week.